Hey, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. Happy New Year's, the first podcast episode for Morrison Heights of the new year. 2022 is here. Our guests today on the podcast from the college ministry, college minister Drew Dabbs and associate Chris Williams. Is associate the right title? Campus Resident. Multiplier. Resident. Yeah, campus multiplier. Campus multiplier. Yeah. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Drew. Thanks. What's yeah. going on in the college ministry besides COVID? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, we have students moving in this weekend. I don't know when this is going to release, but... Uh, uh, it'll go out this afternoon, so... Sweet. Same yeah, day. so this weekend, they'll all be here January 9th, and uh, we're kicking off our midweek worship called Refresh next Wednesday. Classes start the 10th, pretty much across the board. Yeah. Um, so MC we're... and Hines are starting on their normal schedule. They're not delaying? Unless something changes drastically in the next 24 hours. No, they're, they're okay. not delaying. Yeah, okay. I don't know JSU schedule. JSU starts to death as well. well. Chris, we heard from you a little bit Sunday morning about uh, the cross conference trip that you guys mm-hmm. recently went to. I heard that somebody thought it was a Comic Con conference. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different thing, right? Yeah, completely different. It was. It's like no Comic Con, for there. but with the cross instead of comics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you don't have to dress up like a superhero. No, you do not. <laughs> or your favorite apostle. <laughs> or favorite. <speaker. laughs> if you do, please. Send us pictures. Uh, so you and Courtney took how many people in this trip? We took 28 students. 28 students? Two church buses. and That's a little... I've, I've yeah. been college minister before, and 28 people on a New Year's trip yeah. is a lot of people. It was a lot. It was stressful. The traveling parts were the most stressful, but... No buses broke down or caught on fire or anything? Yeah, nothing happened. It was Drew That's called great. us right before, and he said that first time he did this... Uh, bus broke down, got a flat tire. I thought we were gonna have the Drew Dabs curse, but um, apparently, without him, bring things me. go real well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, tell us about the conference. Done. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was uh, incredible. Um, Cross Conference is a conference for eighteen to twenty-five year olds. Uh, it's kind of a more of a missions geared conference about mobilizing college students uh, to go overseas. Um, so it's put on by. David Platt, J.D. Greer, John Piper. Who's the best speaker? Guys. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of biased. I always lis- love listening to J.D. Greer stuff. Um, David Platt's always really good. But I think my favorite one was probably John Piper's uh, from this past session. It was really good. Um, so, yeah. John Typical. Piper can deliver. <laughs> you can deliver. Sometimes. Uh, you want to hear an interesting J.D. Greer story? Kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, probably 2007. Yeah, in fact, it was 2007. Um, the, I was associate college minister, and the college minister was friends with J.D. Greer from seminary. Oh. And so uh, so he came and did an event. It was at MC. It was sponsored by Morrison really? as college wow. ministry. Uh, excellent. I mean, the guy, he can, yeah. he can deliver. Uh, there were like 45 people there. <laughs> we did it in Swore Auditorium, <laughs> and nobody came. Dang. So it was, a, was it in 2007. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't remember going to it. I should have been yeah, there. You should have been <laughs> there. I was a student. I should have been there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. I'm part of the problem. <laughs> uh, but we did go out to eat with JD Greer afterwards. I had a good talk with him. So it was awesome. Nice. Dang, uh, that's cool. Yeah, it was cool. Um, so, what's coming up this semester in the college ministry? I want to hear about the expedition thing. Yeah. What's that? <clears throat> yeah, so um, 111 Project is something we've done for probably six, seven years now. Yeah. Year one, we sent three students. The goal was to partner our students, send them to work with missionary efforts where we have an ongoing strategic partnership. Uh, over the years, it grew. It, it peaked three or four years ago. Uh, we sent 22 students. Um, with COVID, the numbers have understandably dropped the yeah. last two summers, but we've still been able to do some exciting things. Two summers ago, we had uh, nine students living in Jackson, working with Soul City, yeah. uh, and then canvassing Battlefield Park neighborhood, uh, trying to think what would it look like if we could plan a church and have an ongoing effort in that neighborhood in West Jackson. Uh, last summer, we had students working in several different locations. Uh, but what we recognized is we needed a way for particularly freshmen, sophomores yeah. to get discipled 
trained, equipped for a lifetime of mission. One thing we always want to be about in the college ministry is we want to do ministry, make disciples where we are, but always have a view towards the nations. Right? We, don't, we don't want students to say like, hey, the nations are so important, you need to drop out of school right now uh, and move to the nations. Hey, you're called to be a disciple maker right here, but you can always do that with a view of unreached people groups all over the world. What's that going to look like for the rest of your life? We want them to process that question. What does this mean for the rest of your life? while they're here. So yeah. over the last, uh, this is an idea that's been brewing for a couple of years, but when Chris and Courtney came in as residents, which is kind of a new thing for us in the college ministry, we sat down and have a conversation and um, I kind of gave them a pretty long leash to run with it and develop it. And yeah. so they put together something to help equip, particularly freshman, sophomore students with a... <coughs> vision for the nations, but also to give them the, um, the uh, competency they yeah. need to actually do it. So I'll let Chris talk a little about what they've set up and what that's going to look like. Yeah, so that's kind of something that we kind of recognized was a lot of many reasons. There's a lot of reasons why some of our students don't go on summer missions, um, but kind of the most prevalent ones were people weren't willing to uh, be able to go for the full summer and they also just didn't feel ready to go and so that's when we kind of got together we wanted to create something that would both uh, be able to give people that opportunity to go and to kind of see unreached peoples with their own eyes to kind of get that heart for unreached peoples and also be discipled in a way uh, to feel competent to learn to do that um, with the end goal of hoping that they would do it again next summer and go for the full summer. Um, so it's going to look, uh, we're still kind of working out the details of it, but pretty much what it's going to consist of is the first week we're looking at having all of our students who are doing the expedition being here at the church, um, hopefully staying in host homes by church members. And we're going to be having uh, some teaching time probably in the morning uh, going over um, things like theology, um, studying scripture, how to share the gospel, um, things like that, hoping to get uh, some of you guys to, to teach that and kind of help be a part of that discipleship portion. And then probably in the afternoons would be uh, opportunities for our students to go out into the city of Jackson serving, um, probably with Soul City, maybe in the Battlefield Park area, but also uh, engaging internationals that are right in here in our backyard in Jackson as well. Um, so we'll be kind of doing that for the first week, and then uh, for the remaining of the trip, or a good portion of it, then we're going to get everyone, we're going to take a flight to Central Asia to go be with some of our partners that we have here at Mo Heights there. That escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so first week, they're here, they're doing discipleship yeah. stuff and working in Jackson. Yep. Second week, you're flying to Central Asia. We're, yep, we're going to be tossing them in there, but... How long uh, are you there? We're going to be there probably for about... Uh, two weeks, 13 or 14 days. Um, but me and Courtney are planning to be there to kind of help shepherd that whole process. And of course, our partners that are from our church that are there, they're going to be helping us a lot too. Uh, but basically, we're going to be going there, serving them, um, doing whatever we can to help their strategy that's going on there and ministry that they have going on. Um, but also, they mentioned... Uh, possibly teaching English in some parts of the city that they're in, in some villages, and kind of giving our students some exposure to cross-cultural work mm -hmm. and learning how to share the gospel and really just see unreached peoples with their own eyes. Uh, because we can talk about it all we want in the college ministry and give the statistics, but whenever those statistics become people that you know by name, that, that tends to settle in the heart. So... Um, that's going to be really awesome. We're really excited about that. Our students are really excited to go somewhere, uh, to be able to travel internationally, um, since it's really going to be the first time we'd be able to do it, Lord willing, if COVID doesn't pick up again. Um, For most of them, I assume this will be their first international yeah. experience. Yep. And that's we a have good some... first experience right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's going to be really good. And then after that, we're going to bring them back here to the church and we're going to have like a two-day debrief to kind of help them process the things they saw 
and also kind of help them apply the things they learned to college ministry next year to their campuses and that sort of thing too. So the whole thing takes place in May. Right. And they're free to do summer school or summer jobs right. or whatever. So we can get them back in time to do summer jobs, summer huh. school. And even, they can even come back and do GenSend as well. Um, GenSend doesn't start till June 18th. So North American Mission Board, working with church plants. We've had GenSend teams go to New Orleans the past few summers, and it's yeah. been a life-changing experience yeah. for those teams. So somebody could do both this right. summer. Yes. Yeah. So... Who do you have going on the trip so far? Do you know? We have about, I think, nine students signed up for expedition. Um, we're pretty sure that they're they're committed to going. Um, and then I think we have about 23, 24 students total who are saying they, they're pursuing going this summer, um, whether it's expedition or going for the full summer as well. Okay. What was your first out-of-the-country experience? It was actually uh, in high school. I, I went to Ukraine with my church I grew up in back in Madison and that was like my first time ever being out of the country and that opened up my eyes and completely changed the way I view the world. And then I went did summer missions after my freshman year whenever I went to the Philippines. Um, I served with Nehemiah teams and um, that was that was probably that was my first time being around an unreached people group. And so that was even more life-changing being around people who had never even heard of Jesus. Uh, when we shared the gospel, they were so confused, had no idea what that was. And so um, that's why we're kind of hoping that our students have that same experience because I haven't been able to <laughs> um, get, um, I guess, uh, get that out of my mind or let that, uh, that's kind of been the seed that's given me the passion to mobilize others and to go myself. So, yeah. Jess Jennings is still doing Nehemiah teams today. He is. Understand that correctly, Sunday? He's still kicking it, so. <laughs> well, when when my wife did summer missions in the Philippines, Jess Jennings was over really? Nehemiah teams. Wow. And he was he was already an institution yeah. at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knew him <laughs> then. And so yeah. it's amazing that he and Wendy, is that his wife? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wendy. He and Wendy are still going. Yep. Wow. Good for them. <clears throat> I would throw in three quick ways the church could be mm-hmm. thinking and supporting the expedition. One is, of course, pray. Like, you, you put your finger right on it. It's it's a jump into the deep end, and that's what yeah. we want. We want to create that sort of life-altering experience and shepherd the students through that and transform the way they see themselves, see themselves as having life on mission. So prayer is huge. Second way the church can support is we will be looking for host homes for college students during that two week gap. Uh, And so if you're interested, let Chris or Courtney know. Uh, And then a third way is financial support. Uh, This will be a pretty expensive, I mean, it's not cheap to go overseas. (laughs) And college students are not known for having money, but they do have time and they are willing to go. Uh, So those would be three ways that the church could um, further support our college students as they go this summer. Yeah. Okay. Chris's email, I assume, is cwilliams at morrisonheights.org. Yeah. Uh, so email Chris to offer a host home or yeah. to ask about how to scholarship one of these students. Yeah, yeah. that'd be huge. That'd be awesome. Appreciate right on. Good. Well, anything else that uh, we need to go over in the college ministry? Y'all were supposed to do training this weekend, right? Yeah, we are supposed to have our leader learning community, what we call our LLC, this weekend. Um, but we have a number of students of leaders who... We're getting sick with COVID. Who had all been hanging out with each other and um, Going to a just co- we're getting we're getting too many calls saying, "Hey, I'm sick. I can't make it this weekend." Um, so we made the very difficult decision to postpone. Yeah. So we'll have that January 21, 22. That's a time where we try to put as many of our missional community, our community group leaders, uh, together in a room, and they spend 24 hours walking through a process where they make their plan for how they're going to do ministry for the yeah. whole semester. Um, so anywhere from 70 to 100 college student leaders in the room for that event. It's, it's one of my favorite events. Uh, so bummed we had to yeah. postpone, but I think it's, <coughs> it'll be better for everyone involved that we, that we did that. Yeah, yeah. right on. Uh, well, you got a verse you want to share with us before we 
pray? Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, kind of our students were wrestling with at Cross Conference, uh, a lot of conversations I had with them, uh, was just kind of the, a lot of our students were wrestling with, you know, God, being a loving God, but also like unreached people groups, uh, people who have never heard the, hear the gospel, um, their eternity, where does their eternity um, lay? And that was kind of a lot of the conversations we were having, which was really good. I was really glad that our students are wrestling with that. Um, but it was really cool in my time with the Lord. I've been studying through the Minor Prophets. And uh, uh, yesterday was reading through Habakkuk, uh, specifically chapter 1. And <laughs> Habakkuk is just complaining to the Lord about pretty much why is God doing these things that don't really maybe make sense in his mind um, about um, the lawless who are not getting uh, justice from the Lord or the Lord is not uh, punishing them for their iniquity. And I love verse 5. Uh, it said, The Lord answers Habakkuk's cry, and he says, Look among the nations and see wonder and be astounded, for I'm doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. Um, so that was just really cool coming out of that conference, and I shared that with uh, some of the students that have been kind of wrestling with that of just trusting in the Lord, trusting in His sovereignty, and that He's doing things uh, that we maybe don't realize or know. Uh, one of my favorite uh, quotes that John Piper always, I always hear him say, um, is that the Lord is always working probably in 3,000 or 4,000 different ways in your life, and you maybe know about one or two of them, you know. Um, and so that was just a good reminder that the Lord is working in ways that we have no idea, and he is about having all nations, people from every people group, worshiping him. And so um, as a ministry, we want to be a part of that to bring people to that, to uh, worship him and uh, that sort of thing, too. So, um, yeah, that was huge encouragement right for me, too. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to read our hospital list for my folks to pray for a few people in our church. Uh, Betty Defabal is in the hospital. Um, Charlie Scrivener, Dr. Charles' son, surgery today. Uh, I think it's shoulder surgery, but my notes say shold, <laughs> which actually says should surgery. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Paxson and Destiny Rooks had their baby Wells. Um, praying for them. And Danny Mullen's dad, Kevin. Uh, is on hospice when we remember mm -hmm. Danny's family. Uh, well, let's pray, and um, I want to lift up what God's doing in the college ministry. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for your mercy on us. Thank you for what you're doing in our church and among college students here and around the world. Please use uh, Chris and Drew, our other college ministry leaders. Use these students who are willing to go and willing to serve and to learn. Pray, Lord, that you'll uh, give them fruitful work around the world and that you'll do uh, a lifetime, a generational work in their lives and the lives of their families and those that they reach. Um, we do pray for your blessing on these that are in the hospital and comfort for those who have lost loved ones. Uh, pray, Lord, for your continued hand to guide us through this uh, COVID-19 crisis, and we ask for your mercy on all of us, Lord. We trust in your mercy because of Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, that's it for this episode. Anything else we should cover before we wrap up? Can't think of anything. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us on the podcast this week. This is Morrison Heights Family Connect. We love our family.